are so many stars, planets, and galaxies that are so far away from our own that we couldn't even hope of developing a tape measure long enough to determine how far away they really are. On the other hand, astronomers regularly talk with confidence about how far away stars and galaxies are, but how is it possible to calculate such distances? It is not an easy thing to measure the distances to objects in the universe, since these objects are usually very far away. We can't just run out there with a ruler. To measure distances in the universe, we will need to construct what is commonly referred to as a cosmic distance ladder. In other words, astronomers use different methods to determine the distances to objects. The specific method which is used depends on how far away the object is. Most of the people only talk about two commonly known methods, radar and parallax, but there are total five methods including them. All the methods are different from each other and their usage depends on the distance from the Earth to the other end. This method has been used in one form or another to determine the distances to all of the planets in our solar system, except Pluto, which we have not visited. It is also routinely used to measure the distance from the Earth to the Moon. Mirrors left by Apollo astronauts reflect a laser beam shot from Earth and allow scientists to keep close track on the lunar orbit. This modern method of measuring distances is based on the fact that all forms of light travels with a speed of 3 lakh kilometers per second. Therefore, based on the fact that distance traveled equals to the speed at which you travel times, the length of time you travel at that speed, we can determine distances in our solar system. Here D is for distance, V is velocity, and T is time. When we use any form of light, V is equal to 3 lakh kilometers per second. So if we measure how long it takes for light to go to an object, we can calculate the distance. Astronomers derive distances to the nearest stars closer than about 100 light -like years by a method called stellar parallax. This method relies on no assumptions other than the geometry of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. You are probably familiar with the phenomenon known as parallax. Let's understand this method first. Hold out your hand, close your right eye, and place your extended thumb over a distant object. Now, switch eyes so that your left is closed and your right is open. Your thumb will appear to shift slightly against the background. By measuring this small change and knowing the distance between your eyes, you can calculate the distance to your thumb. This is a demonstration of the parallax effect, the apparent shift in position of a relatively nearby object against more distant ones when viewed from different vantage points. Now consider that the Earth moves in its orbit around the Sun, allowing us to look at nearby stars from slightly different locations, just like your two eyes are at slightly different locations. As the image shows, you can see that by knowing the size of Earth's orbit and measuring the angles of the light from the star at two points in the orbit, the distance to the star can be derived. The farther the star is, the smaller the angles. Cephades, also called cephade variables, are stars which break thin and dim periodically. This behavior allows them to be used as cosmic yardsticks out to distances of a few tens of millions of light years. Astronomers can identify them not only in our galaxy, but in other nearby galaxies as well. If one requires the distance to a given galaxy, one first locates the Cephade variables in this galaxy. From these observations, one determines the period of each of these stars. Leavitt's data states that a given period has a unique brightness associated to it. So from the period in Leavitt's plot, we get the brightness at the distance of one light year. We can also measure the brightness on Earth. The brightness at the distance of one light year will be larger than the observed brightness, due to the fact that brightness drops like the square of the distance. From these numbers, one can extract the distance to the stars. At large distances up to about 1 billion light years, astronomers can no longer use methods such as parallax or cephate variables. 
Astronomers then turn to a series of methods that use standard candles, that is, objects whose absolute magnitude is thought to be very well known. Then, by comparing the relative intensity of light, observed from the object, with that expected based on its assumed absolute magnitude, the inverse square law for light intensity can be used to infer the distance. The unique characteristics and enormous brightness of a certain type of supernova, the explosion which can occur at the end of the main sequence life of a massive star, can be used to determine distances beyond the reach of the previous methods. There have been many measurements of the manner in which a supernova, whose distance to Earth is known using one of the previous methods, increases its brightness and then dims into oblivion. There is one type called Type IA for which this brightening and dimming is very regular. When the maximum brightness at a distance of one light year is calculated using the known distance and the one half of distance to rule, it is found to be about the same for all stars. Such Type IA supernovae are then our standard candles. Since supernovae are extremely bright, this method is useful to very large distances, up to 1 billion light years. For very far objects beyond about 1 billion light years, none of the above methods work. Scientists must move from direct observation to using observations in conjunction with a theory. The theory used to determine these very great distances in the universe is based on the discovery by Edwin Hubble that the universe is expanding. In 1929, Edwin Hubble found that the universe was expanding, with all of the galaxies moving away from each other. This phenomenon was observed as a redshift of a galaxy's spectrum. This redshift appeared to be larger for faint, presumably further galaxies. Hence, the farther a galaxy is, the faster it is receding from Earth. The velocity of a galaxy could be expressed mathematically as v equals to h, multiply with d, where v is the galaxy's radial outward velocity, d is the galaxy's distance from Earth, and h is the constant of proportionality, called the Hubble constant. The exact value of the Hubble constant is still somewhat uncertain, but is generally believed to be around 65 kilometers per second for every megaparsec in distance. This means that a galaxy one megaparsec away will be moving away from us at a speed of 65 kilometers per second, while another galaxy 100 megaparsecs away will be receding at 100 times this speed. So essentially, the Hubble constant reflects the rate at which the universe is expanding. So to determine an object's distance, we only need to know its velocity. Velocity is measurable, thanks to the Doppler shift. By taking the spectrum of a distant object, such as a galaxy, astronomers can see a shift in the lines of its spectrum, and from this shift determine its velocity. Putting this velocity into the Hubble equation, they determine the distance. It should be noted that this method is based on observation and on Hubble's law theory. If the theory is not correct, the distances determined in this way are all nonsense. So, now we know how do we measure the distances to things in space. If you think this video is informative, do like this video and subscribe our channel. May science bless you.